you're just getting started building layouts inside a framer, the terms like frame, stack, absolute, relative, they all might be a bit overwhelming to you, but don't worry, you come to the right place. My name is Matt Jumper, and in this video, I'm gonna get you super familiar with how layouts work inside a framer, and you'll be building your own custom designs in no time. Let's start simple. We have a website here. This is what we're gonna recreate, but here's the secret. Everything here and every website ever is just containers inside of containers. And that's really all you need to know about layouts is how to use containers. So if I outline all the frames and stacks in red, this is what I mean. This is what you'd see. So let's dive in and recreate this in a way that makes sense. All right, so in Framer, we have two types of containers. We have frames and we have stacks. First up is frames. Think of a frame as an empty box or in Figma, it would be an artboard or in HTML, it would just be a div. I'm gonna drop in different layers into this frame because by default, your desktop breakpoint here and the page is actually just a frame. If I paste all the elements in here without any frames or stacks, you'll see that all of the positions here are type absolute and I can only change it between absolute and fixed. So when things are absolute, it means there's no order to these. I can click on this image and I can drag it anywhere I want to. I can click on this logo, drag it anywhere. And if I preview this, the responsiveness is pretty much non-existent. I can do some things to make things responsive here as far as the width goes. I can make this image 50% relative. And since this locked aspect ratio is here, it'll grow proportionally. And I can anchor this to the left. So this is always gonna be 50% of the width, but you'll see nothing else is really responsive to this. We could make this 50% as well, but as you get more complex layouts, you really want to avoid just using these relative percentages and actually build out with stacks. But before we get into stacks, a couple other things to note. As far as the sizing goes, we have a fixed width here for the text, and this might be how you wanna lay it out, where you know what, this ragging is good. I like the way it's positioned. This is at 443. It is not a good idea to set this to fixed uh, because it's never gonna get smaller than this. And if I set it to fit, it's gonna be too wide for this page. So. In this context, a relative position of say 50% would work and you anchor it to the right, but this isn't how you actually wanna build layouts, but we have this option given the right use case. If we look at our navigation, we actually have a um, fixed, width icon, fixed width icons here that I can make a frame and put these inside and say, make this 24, increase the radius to a circle, and let's just add a red border on all of these so we can just keep track of what's actually a container. Remove the fill, and I can just put these icons inside and duplicate them. That's a perfect use case for a frame just a single item that is a fixed size. But as you get into these more complex layouts here, we have two buttons underneath this text. We want some spacing here that's a consistent size. Again, frames aren't gonna cut it, and that's where stacks come in. So think of a stack like a magic container that organizes all the content inside. Um, think about auto layout in Figma or Flexbox and HTML and CSS. So you can turn any frame, say this desktop frame, into a layout just by hitting the plus button on this layout here, and you'll see everything now is in order. And you'll see this actually getting cut off because um, the height here is still fixed at 1,000, so we can just change this to fit content, and now it's gonna adapt to the content inside. Where to start here? We have properties that we can change that's gonna basically adhere to, like all of the elements inside are gonna listen to this, so I can change the gap in between all the elements. I can add padding around the whole thing. Um, I can do it isolated as well. But on this top level container, I'm gonna leave it as it is and not change these properties. And I'm gonna start grouping um, more stacks together and nest these to start making layouts. So we'll start with the navigation. We have all these elements. So I'm just gonna grab these on the left here. And the shortcut here is command option return. So put it in a stack here and we can go direction left and right. And we can now, I'm gonna set the border on all these again. And we'll copy this. And let's start nesting again. So I'm gonna keep these three items. I'm gonna hit Shift A here to, to nest them inside. 
and the width here is actually fill. So it's actually going to fill the available space. And um, you'll see it's pushing all the other content to the left because these are all set to fit. So I'm going to change the distri distribution here to start. So it's going to actually start on the left and increase the gap here to 16. And then I'm going to take these three icons in the layers panel and I'm going to hit shift A, put them in their own stack as well. And they're set to fill. I'm going to change the distribute to the end. And now they're um, at the end of the stack here. And the order here, I'm just going to put the logo in the middle and I need to swap these two. So the links are at the end or at the beginning and the icons are at the end. And then on this parent stack here, I can just add padding. I can isolate it just so it's to the outside and add say 48 pixels of padding on the left and right. I could add top and bottom padding to this or for more control, I could just set this to a fixed size of say 48. I'm gonna go back to the stack here and we can add a gap of say four, which is nice that we have a control for this gap versus this gap is gonna be a different number. And because these are both set to fill, this text in the middle is gonna end up being perfectly centered. And I'm just gonna paste the borders on here so we can keep track of all the containers that we're making. You'll notice that this height is slightly, um, You'll notice that this height is slightly bigger at 24 and this is at 12, but that's totally fine. Going down, we have our uh, text here and our two buttons in our image. And then I'm going to take this image and the text in the hero here and let's hit shift A, put it in a stack. And this is going up and down. I'm going to go left and right. And all of these layers here are actually width 100%. So it's going to take up more than the space that we have here. I'm going to select these two and just set it to fill. And you'll see that we have our two buttons on the right side of this because it's still in that same stack. I'm going to take these two, put them in their own stack, and then take the stack again, put it in the stack with the text above it, and then change the direction to up and down. And I'll just hit paste here on the border so we can keep track. And we are looking good. So you'll notice that we're kind of edge to edge here on this stack. So what we can do is we can change this to add some padding and add say 48 pixels. And because we have both set to fill this image and this container, both are set to fill, but this has padding of 48. So it's actually taking up from this available space. So if we set this um, or even this part to either one really to 50% relative, it's always going to be 50% instead of that extra padding. So now it's actually split perfectly down that middle. And we have the padding around it. We can take this a step further. And if we preview this, we'll see that this text is always going really wide. So let's put this in another stack. We'll hit Shift A. And I'll paste that border here. And let's add a max width and set a fixed value here of whatever value that we want the widest text here. So if we're saying we're happy with this, we can just go to fixed and see it's 504. We can just play with this and yeah, 504 is probably good. Or maybe 470. So we'll leave it at fill, but then we'll add a max width of 470. And then now as it expands out, it's never gonna get wider than that, but as we scale down, it is fully responsive. We have our buttons in here and we can increase the, the gap here, say 16. And then we obviously want some spacing between these two buttons so we can change the gap in this layout, say to eight. And then let's put these buttons in their own stacks here, hit shift A. And we don't want these to fill. I'm gonna select both and actually just go back to fit. And we can add a background here of say black, uh, or maybe the first one will do black. And the second one will keep white and we'll add a border. And then we can set the text of the first one to white. And then now let's just take these two stacks and play with what that padding should look like. So again, we can make a fixed height and then we can add say 16 pixels of padding on each side. And then if you wanted to, basically what I would do is actually turn these into components um, and then add links here. But just going over the layout, this is the structure. We're pretty good, but when you take this out really wide in the browser, I don't love how this is like getting really tall. So we can take this image here and actually detach the, or unlock the aspect ratio and set the height to 100% viewport. And it's actually just always gonna be filling your browser height regardless of the pixel size, and it won't be any bigger than that. So it's always gonna be that perfect size. 
we can take this footer here and I'd probably set this text here to fill and we can add another stack here and add that 40, 48 pixel padding. And we're in good shape. One other thing to note is that if you want some special behavior of say this navigation to remain at the top, we have a couple options here. The first one is we can actually set this to a fixed position, which takes this stack out of the layout. Um, so similar to absolute where it's not gonna affect everything else. You'll see that everything else just kind of jumped up a bit. Um, and if we do this, we can just set a background behind it. If we want to, we have that red border, that's fine. And there's now image sitting behind this, which is totally fine. But as you scroll, that navigation is always gonna be there. So for fixed to work, all you have to make sure is that you are on the top level here and you're not nested inside another stack or frame. The other option here, if you wanna use another special property with some scrolling behavior, instead of fixed, you actually could set this to sticky where it's in line. So it's actually treated as relative, but then it stays at the top and waits for the rest of the content to finish before it continues to scroll. So a bit of a more nuanced approach here where this is gonna be sticky. So it's actually back in the layout. You'll see this image actually starts here now. And the navigation, I wanna click on this desktop here and actually make sure overflow is set to visible and all of the stacks and parent containers above this need to be overflow visible. And then we need to put this in its own stack as well, where this is the navigation and this is the body. And this is the footer. If we put the nav and the body in that same stack here and make sure it's fill fit and overflow is visible. If we preview this, you'll see it's actually sticking here. Um, and if we got to the bottom here, say this was 200 viewport height, just to get some height here, you'll see that it gets pushed away. So you could do this for navigation um, or you could do this for other elements, but you need, that's the difference between fixed and sticky is that it actually is in the layout and it just waits for other content to catch up in that same stack. So I'm gonna undo this and leave it as fixed. I think it probably makes more sense here, but it's good to have those options. And going back anytime you set an item to fixed, you just wanna make sure that your width here is actually set to, um, if you're trying to do full width 100% relative, because otherwise it'll be a fixed size. So if we preview this, we'll see that this website is basically perfectly responsive, even without any breakpoints. We only have desktop here, but we can add tablet and then refine. So let's take this image here at the top and we can just drop this height down to like say 75 viewport. We can take this container here and just make it fill. And we can change the padding on mobile, maybe increase the top and bottom and decrease the left and right. And for the sake of this, let's just hide the nav items and just keep that logo. So at this point going out and even above that 1200, everything is behaving perfectly. One other thing you can't forget about is the wrap property. So if I take this stack and actually just reduce the width of this, you'll see that the text is responding nicely. At a certain point, those buttons are just getting cropped off. So what you wanna do is actually take the stack that these buttons are in. It's set to fill, so it's taken up that uh, space, that container. If I turn on wrap, as soon as there's not enough space for each of these elements, because they actually have a fixed width here, it's fit, but we're, uh, we can see it's 86 and uh, 92. As soon as there's not enough space for both of them on the same line, it's gonna wrap it and you can set that gap property here to adjust that spacing. So if you wanna increase that to 80 or whatever that is, you can have full control over it. All right, so if you're ready to try this yourself, I recommend remixing this file, it's in the notes below but also just go find your favorite website and recreate it inside of Framer and really look at the stacks and frames and the whole container situation. If any other video requests, drop a comment below.